Come with me on the fastest ever 24 hour trip to Paris. So I made my way to London St. Pancras and then checked into the business premier lounge. Now I'm actually headed to Paris with Renault for the next 24 hours and I could not be more excited. We are going to see the Roland Garros, the French Open. I was lucky enough to be invited here before and this is my second time going so I kind of knew the drill. I arrived early and headed up to the Business Premier Lounge where it's really, really comfortable up there. Quick pit stop to the loo, obviously. Pretty bougie. And then I went and treated myself to a cup of coffee from the little barista area and a little croissant. Now, the croissants over here are just not going to rival the croissants in Paris. Now I've got something planned for when I go there. But I figured I'd better be testing this one out just for a comparison. Then I grabbed myself what I thought was a sparkling water, but this was actually a pineapple infused sparkling water and it was pretty delicious. Then I met up with the rest of the gang and headed toward the station. Now there's people from everywhere that were coming to this, so we were a group of five girls and it was actually so much fun. Sometimes it can feel a little bit weird coming on these brand trips by yourself, but this group has been amazing. They're such lovely people and I'm so, so happy that I got to go with them. We made it. So a few hours later, we arrived in Paris and this lovely man carried my bag for me to the car. Smile, ladies. <laughs> Quick glimpse of the Eiffel Tower before we head into our hotel. Now this is called Mama Shelter and the hotel itself is absolutely beautiful. It has a rooftop that is stunning. And this is my room. And how cozy is this? The beds are so, so comfortable here. Like cannot tell you how comfy they are and the pillows are just to die for. So we headed up to the rooftop bar and had a little bit of pizza. Then rushed in a mad dash to get ready for the match and I could not wait. Here we are at the Rolling Garros. Look at that little Renault. Cool. Look how you're like, I speak French now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Je suis la champagne. Je vais The level of class that is at a tennis match always makes me feel like an imposter syndrome. It just feels so fancy and so bougie and I cannot remember skating competitions ever feeling this great. There's just something about the sport of tennis and the sport of golf that's a gentleman's sport and just makes you feel fancy. So oh, this is the bougie Renault private VIP. How gorgeous is the setup? Renault is the number one sponsor of the Roland Garros and it's just absolutely stunning here. And there's my lovely Laura. Laura is in charge of all of us and she is such a doll and she actually lives really close to me. Um, then I just skipped right to dessert. I couldn't even deal with eating a real meal. I wanted to have dessert right away. I just like to document everything. I'm going to be a food vlogger now. show your dinner and then after that we introduce you to the course, Philippe Chatrier, for the games in few minutes. Take your time, enjoy the champagne, and then after that, come back. The champagne are on the refrigerator. Please, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. And then it was time to get into the stadium and get to our seats. Now, when I tell you we had the best seats in the house, we actually had the best seats in the house. We sat behind the number two. We're literally front row. People kept sending me pictures of seeing me on TV. So, for reference, the match tonight was between a French man who is number 78 in the world and an Italian man who is number 2 in the world. You're not even ready. You couldn't even believe it. <laughs> ready? And obviously we are in France, so the crowd was a little bit rowdy and plugging for the Frenchman. And ironically enough, this Frenchman, Monet, we actually saw a play against Nadal the first time I went, and he puts on such a great show. But the match did go on for hours, and halfway through I realized that Bridgerton Season 3 has a part 2 that's coming out, and I was given the trailer, and so here I am watching that. There are definitely a few things about tennis I will never understand. The moaning, the way the ball boys stand, and the way the referees yell so loudly. I will also never get behind the scoring system. Like, who decided these numbers? Who just made these numbers up?
drama. <laughs> it's a very dramatic, overexcited sport, and I'm here for it. I love tennis. Now there's definitely something about this Frenchman that makes everybody get involved. He's so charismatic and so over the top and so dramatic, but it's such a fun show to watch. He's so enjoyable to watch. So here he was fighting with the referee. Now this referee was lovely. He actually seemed so nice. A couple times the crowd was being really rambunctious and really loud and he just kind of giggled with it. He was also defending the people on his team that had called the faults and it was just very, very dramatic. However, it makes for such a good show. He is cranky. Somebody's having a bad day. He's not happy. And here he goes again. He kept saying in perfect English, this is so stupid, which is really funny because we are in France. He probably could have spoken to the man in France, but they chose to speak in English and they fought in English and we could literally hear it. In the end, number two center did prevail and he was fantastic. He hardly had any showing of emotion, which also made him fun to watch because he didn't show anything and he won and was fantastic. It's been an absolute whirlwind. I am now headed down for breakfast. I'm gonna go explore Paris today. And I can't wait, I'm so excited. I have the whole day to myself. So I actually extended my ticket so I could stay a few hours and do some touristy things. And it was a long day yesterday, but I've gotten myself up bright and early, went and checked out the beautiful spread for breakfast. So I'm just about to leave to go explore Paris for the day, but I could not leave without telling you guys about these special things that have been in my room. Weirdest hotel room ever. Lovely room, gorgeous, lovely. I didn't make my bed, don't judge me. But you probably got a little peek of that. What's with... The Looney Tune masks, Tweety Bird, and Bugs Bunny. It's not a little bit weird to you guys? Not a little bit strange? I feel like such a tourist. So I have to say, I'm rather proud of myself. I am actually doing like a little solo trip. My bag. I'm a total tourist. And I am just stood right in front of the Eiffel Tower. Like, just look at that. Here I am, front row center to the Eiffel Tower. A little girl from Woburn. <laughs> I don't know where it is. It is 9 o'clock, not even 8.30, 8.45, okay. Um, and I'm here at the Eiffel Tower. I've decided I'm gonna do like a little tour and go around the Eiffel Tower, do a few more things, do champs de la days, just wherever I can find, and just enjoy the next few hours in Paris, because. How often do you get to come to Paris, right? This is the wildest thing. So there's so many people here taking photos and pictures and everything, and it's so early in the morning. I thought I'd be like the first one here, and there's like hundreds of people just here taking photos. This is wild. I can't get over how many people are here. It's like, it's not in the morning. So many tourists. Just tourist central. I'm one of them. It really is beautiful though. Like. It's very beautiful, you have to admit it. It is really cool looking, so. You'd think you'd get jaded, but I've seen the Eiffel Tower multiple times now, and I just, I just think it's beautiful every time. So I've decided to do Paris by foot today. I passed the Shangri-La, and then something else that was big, and then the Chez Emily that reminded me of Emily in Paris, and all of these gorgeous little cafes with that little orange car. I wanted to spend most of my day exploring by foot because there's so much more you can see than getting in an Uber, so I tried my hardest not to. Plugged in an address into my Google Maps and I had remembered where we had gone with Hannah the first time I was here, so I just went by foot. I feel like I know this city. I found my way to Arc de Triomphe. Made it. Massive bus right in front. Paris doesn't sleep, man. No matter what time it is, Horse Central. Still with my trusty bag. I'm in love here. I can live here. This place is made for me. I feel like Emily in Paris. Alex in Paris right now. Then I made my way down the Champs Elysees, but because it was so early, hardly anything was open. I didn't care. I was really only looking for one thing, and that's Lauderay. Lauderay is notorious for their French macaroons, and they are fantastic. <laughs> 
You guys know how I love mint green, how it's the color of the season. Well, Lauderay's mint green is the color of every season. It's basically like a Tiffany blue, and they're notorious for it. I perused around the colorful pastries, but I knew what I was there for. I had come for one thing and one thing only, the macaroons, and I was gonna get half of them in pistachio because mint green is my favorite. So here she is wrapping up my Bridgerton inspired box. I picked a couple pistachio and then some regular flavors like a vanilla, caramel, and even one called Marie Antoinette. What a time to be watching Bridgerton. Bridgerton is everywhere. I can't believe I'm just talking to it this week and I've been to Paris and it's just everywhere. It's literally everywhere. One of the most beautiful places I think I've ever been to. Thank you, Missy. Bridgerton. And so I secured the goods from Lauderay, made my way to the next stop. Could the weather get any better? I mean, every time I come to Paris, it's perfect. I love it here. And a buddy. So there I was on the hunt for the biggest croissant. Just on my hunt for a croissant. Stumbled upon this. St. Louis Square or Square de Louis. Very beautiful. This food box is very beautiful. Stunning here. I mean, who gets better like this till one day they come to Paris? I have the luck of the Irish. I had to come all the way to Lafayette because there was this one brand that sells the one pound croissant and every one of their shops was closed except for this one pop-up today. This is Philippe Contesini. You guys have probably seen it on TikTok. They are famous for making a one kilogram croissant and it's just everywhere right now. And I made it my mission to find it. I'm doing it. I've come all the way, I've come all the way for this. How is she even gonna wrap this up? Ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Morning Paris. She's got a double bag it. Thank you, thank you so much. Perfect. It's enormous. <laughs> yeah, can I have a bag like that? Thank you. <laughs> Perfect, thank you so much. I can't believe I went all that way just to get it, but I had to do it. I had to do it. Okay, so I've come all the way to Sacramento to eat my one kilogram croissant. Listen to the French. Man. I literally came all this way to France for this croissant. It weighs a freaking kilogram. What am I supposed to do with this? How does one gracefully eat that? This cost 32 euro, worth every penny. It's at this place called Philippe something. It literally is the most wildest croissant I've ever seen in my life. People are staring. And I'm at Sacre Coeur. The bird just literally threw in front of me. <laughs> Look! <laughs> Only in Paris, right? Strong attraction for people. <laughs> Only you can see the faces. Well, signing off from Sacre Coeur. This is the aftermath. To be fair, it is my fault. Hey guys, eat up. Eat up, friends. I caused quite the scene on the Sacre Coeur steps with my croissant, if you haven't seen it already. And then I decided to go have a little moutra on Montmartre. It's absolutely beautiful up here. There's tons of cafes and things to do and just so many little memorabilia pieces that you can buy for friends and family. There was this gorgeous cafe in the sun called La Boheme and it was just all full. So I decided to have a little bit of a moutra on because I knew if I walked around in a circle, I could manifest that there'd be a seat by the time I got back there. Sure enough, there was. Somebody was just about to move as I was walking past, so I decided to snag their seat, rest my feet for a little bit, and get myself a coffee and some water. I sat at Sacre Coeur because I have a train at like, what, 3.30, so I've got like another hour to hang out here before I have to go to the train station. I could totally get used to living like a French woman. Then as I made my way down, I stopped upon a dog park and I just thought it was so freaking cute. I fell in love with all of them. So I didn't want to wait in line for I think it's called the Penicula or something. Basically, it's this gondola thing that takes you down these. So I'm lugging my crap down this. I am a tourist. 
I love her. I just love this country. Look at this line up for the gondola. Not me. She's strong. She can do this. She's a champion. We're almost done. Almost the end. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, I made it. It's a lot of fucking stairs. Say goodbye. Off to the train station. I had the most epic day by myself, and it's only like one. I've secured the goods. Goods are there, ready to take home, bring a Paul back some lingerie, and also a giant croissant. Um, and I'm headed home. What a like fast turnaround, right? Here we are, Garden Odd. Because I'm doing business, I can do most right away, which is exciting. I get to cut all the slime. I'm loving it. So I was just over the trying to get to a train that is literally going to come now, which is amazing because business, they just switched it for me. Sounds like a good idea, but now I'm driving it because I might miss it. This is the fastest turn around ever. It's awesome. If you go on business, you can literally just change it when you want. So she says, you want to turn it off? I was like, yeah, I do. I have made it, but not with a minute to spare. Everyone's running. I'm running. Everything was late, but I didn't have to sit in like the business thing. I get to just kind of go home early. So I changed my ticket so I'll literally come like 3 p.m. How awesome is that? I've literally turned my whole day perfectly. I got here with no time to waste. It's incredible. Now I probably missed out on some businessy perks where you just don't have to hustle to get to your spot, but it's worth it to get to the home really, isn't it? I made it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I made it, I made it. David Blaine, like the most famous magician of all time, like the coolest, most famous, nicest guy. And yeah, what did I do? I just watched Bridgerton, didn't even know who he was. And he was so nice, he was like signing pictures with people and being super kind and like giving them, I don't know, like signed copies of cards and stuff and doing magic tricks. And I was just like, what is he doing? All I'm doing is watch Bridgerton. Sure, shit, fucking David Blaine sat behind me. Anyway, sure got the pictures and instead I took a cheeky photo and I was like, who's this guy? Oh, it's David Blaine, I had to Google it. Absolute idiot. Here I am! Hi! Hi! Oh my god. Come around! Come around! Come here! Come here! Oh my goodness.